wonderful edition of the Nerdcast, we would like to apologize first and foremost for being a little bit late tonight. Uh, we had a little bit of technical difficulties. Um, as you can see, uh, Will does not have video, as is per usual, let's be honest. But uh, Will did get a webcam, and we were trying to mess with it to see if it would work. But alas, as is pretty much the entirety of 2020, gremlins have ruined everything. So, uh, with that being the case, um, I'm James. Uh, I've already said that Will is here. Uh, I mean, you pretty much know who we are at this point. Uh, if you haven't, I mean, I mean, admittedly, Will's not like as rememberable because he hasn't been on as many episodes, but I think everybody remembers him. And what I think is kind of like the rule of the land here, mostly, whatever, I'm, I'm digging myself in a hole at this point. Uh, we're going to be talking about tone deafness and uh, why it's not uh, fucking legitimate anymore because, you know, it just fucking isn't. Uh, this is a subject that was brought up by, uh, by Will because it was something, something happened uh, the other day that, frankly, I didn't know about. Um, I've been a little bit too busy with my, like, own mental shit to know. So, uh, Will, what's up, man? Howdy, howdy. It's going to be fun. <clears throat> um, yeah, there's just <laughs> definitely, we've already probably put the official content warning out there, but I definitely want to get this out of the way up front mm -hmm. for everyone who's here, and we'll be circling back to touch on it every now and then just to, as people join the stream. This is going to be touching on some very rough stuff. Um, in general, we're not going to go into deep detail, but we are going to be talking um, violence against uh, LGBT folks, the ongoing um, defund movement with the police, and a variety of other topics touching on some very intense themes as we talk about a couple of very notable tone-deaf, unforced errors in the games industry lately. So be aware, <laughs> and if at any point, if at any point you want us to walk back or brush over things a little more and ease it up, you know, send us an X card and we will say, hey, let's ease up a little on how we present it. We're still going to talk about things because this is important to talk about, but there's no need to be gratuitous as we do so. So exactly. we are here listening to you. Just drop it. Just drop a big X in the chat, and we will slow our roll. Mm -hmm. I think I might. Uh, I think I might actually put that somewhere, somewhere around like here on the uh, on our actual like template, because um, that's actually a really good idea. Is to go ahead and make the X card like a, a pretty pretty standard thing on all of our streams. Because the last thing that we yeah. want to do is like you know make somebody uncomfortable. Or, you know, trigger people. So. And just before we get started, uh, thank you, Thomas YAIP, for being a recent follower. We are happy to see you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Will, how about you tell us about what happened the other day that brought all this subject to the fore? Because uh, you're, well, you got I your ear know. to the ground a little I, bit I, more than I do. Not always, but um, this one is, is uh, it touches on something fairly near and dear. The, uh, the wonderful folks at Paizo are going to be publishing a new, how do I describe this, fantasy cops uh adventure uh or a supplement called agents of edge watch the, the 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 huh the link doesn't work all of a sudden i wonder if they're pulling it <laughs> um what was agents it called? of edge watch is okay. agents of watch I keep wanting to say, I, I say that, you, you, you might notice I'm saying that a little 
awkwardly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's because I keep wanting to say Agents of Edgelord. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's their 27th um, uh, Pathfinder Adventure Path, uh, which are uh, monthly 96-page publications released by Paizo, each volume consisting of one segment of a six-part series of adventures linked together by story arc and theme. In addition to the main adventure, each issue also features support articles on the Pathfinder campaign, setting new monsters, etc. Et um, here's the tagline for Agents of Edgewatch, uh, which is expected July 2020, so next month. Devil at the Dreaming Palace, get ready to shine your badge and report for duty. This is what I called because I don't I don't know if folks have been listening, but there's a bit of a massive <laughs> right now there are massive systemically racist police system that allows cops to get away with murdering black people to release pro and to release a pro police fantasy rpg supplement that literally says polish up your shield in the teeth of that is in monumentally bad taste no matter how long you've worked on it or how much it's cost yeah it seems like it's uh <clears throat> it seems like the timing is really odd but i mean we we kind of have to give paizo the benefit of the doubt because you know they they didn't i'm sure that they didn't know that all of the george floyd stuff was going to happen um i didn't i'm sure they didn't know that the the uh entirety of everything that's going on right now wasn't going to happen but at the same time um, and I've, I've been, while you've, while you've been talking about it, I've been kind of looking up things that I, that I can find. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that leads to dead links um, and so on and so forth. But it looks like um, there was actually something that was posted today, uh, about three hours ago, um, that basically Paizo is, has explained what it's supposed to be, what their intention with it was. And uh, the fact of that they cannot afford to not release it. Um, I, I get that in a way, uh, just because, you know, you have... Um, I mean, you've already, you've already put a whole bunch of money into something, so, you know. Um, but... You know, it's one of those deals. Uh, they say that it's supposed to be... Where did I see that? Um, it's supposed to be a Victorian-era detective pseudo-Victorian crime drama thing, similar to, like, Sherlock Holmes and that sort of thing. Uh, in their heads, it was a classic detective story, not a chance for players to act out power fantasies of being, mili <laughs> God, being militarized police officers oppressing citizens. Um, as a publisher... Uh, this person, who was this? Uh, Eric Mona. Um, as a publisher, they were confident that they could steer well of egregious parallels to modern police violence and handle the material responsibly. Um, I'm not 100% sure how to, like, how to, like, make and take that. Um, by the way, uh, Demian... Demian? I'm, I'm hoping that's that I'm pronouncing that correctly. Hawthorne. Demian. Oh. I, this is a friend of mine. Demian okay. Hawthorne. Demian Hawthorne uh, did say that uh, Cyberpunk 2020 has a cop class and curious how much of it is intentional, tone deaf, or pre-planned. Um, welcome to the stream, buddy. Uh, notice that you're, you're brand new, just created an account, so uh, welcome to Riot House um, and, our, and our friendly family of rioters. Um... So I think with stuff like uh, cyberpunk, um, you kind of can't get away from police. Uh, the, in the entirety of the cyberpunk genre is standing up to the man, standing up to um, corporations, just standing up to, this, to the dystopian uh, 
the dystopia that is any kind of cyberpunk or neo-future uh, type setting. So I don't think that you can really get away from like the police or incorporating the police into those. Um, and as and I you didn't uh, say if there's a but... go ahead. That's the point. Um, there's the difference. Shadowrun, um, for example, makes the presumption. Although you can play as a cop, you can play as Knight Errant or Lone Star, or if you absolutely lack a fundamental understand punk or want to play a subversive game where you start out as cops and move into being runners. But um, Cyberpunk 2020 has a cop class in the book printed. And that implies you are part of the system. You're playing as part of the system. And you mentioned that Paizo said that they basically want to see if they can steer clear of the most egregious examples of modern, violent, militarized policing. The core combat mechanic systems and Paizo, Paizo's Pathfinder, basically an update of Dungeons & Dragons 3rd Edition D20 system, is combat. That is the core combat. Yeah, it's all, it's all about bonuses. fighting. <laughs> yeah. And and any adventure can steer clear of that. But when the bulk of your abilities are combat abilities, it's you're you're already intrinsically linking the violence and the policing. And that happens. I I played in a shadow run game recently where we burst through a Guns blazing from go, it, essentially. It was crazy. And, you know, but, you know, we went non lethal and what have you as best we could. But, you know, I'm not going to lie. There are some problematic themes there. But it's in the face of all of this that is going on with community policing as you know, be breaking down into this massive number of violent incidents and you know the cops knocking over old men and and the the murder of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd it, it's to release a Uh, 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 to release a police adventure amid all that, especially in one where violence is the core mechanic of resolution in the game, it's 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 in monumentally bad taste. And and they can say we can't afford not to release it. And I fair enough, I understand you've got to consider being able to pay the people who worked on things. But you know what? Band of Brothers, the TV series on HB. The first promos for it came out September 9th, 2001. That is two days before 9-11. And because the promos were talking about, you know, while people wondered why we signed up to for the Airborne, well, our country was attacked. And, you know, the, that made a lot of folks angry and we wanted to, they pulled it. They pulled the advertising. They delayed Band of Brothers fairly significantly. I forget exactly how long, but they delayed things over this. I can guarantee you a lot more money and a lot a lot more people were involved with that that were gonna you know, there was gonna be a delay on recouping their investment. Yeah. And it's still tone deaf to release it. You may you may have good reasons for releasing it, you may have justifications. And there may you may need to pay people, and I understand. I want freelancers and contributors and game writers and designers and developers to get paid for their work and for their stuff to be recognized. But just because you worked hard on something and it turned out to be a bad investment doesn't mean you release it. Yeah, well, you're friggin' Paizo. You're friggin' Paizo. You have a big reputation in the game industry as the improvement on Dungeons and Dragons third edition get a loan and work harder <laughs> well and and also too so 
I'm, I'll be honest, I'm probably going to be playing Devil's Advocate a fair amount here. Um, just because, you know, I feel like both sides at the very least, if, <laughs> for, for lack of a better term, both sides need to get their day in court, as it were. Um, so, because of that, <laughs> um, I think that, you know, you had said before that... Um, <laughs> Uh, yes, Damien, I did. I do admit that I, that I am playing the devil's advocate, so therefore my side is technically <laughs> the devil. Um, which you know, I've always been one of those people. The devil doesn't need an advocate. Be, you know why? Because he's the fucking devil. But regardless, um, so whenever you have uh, the, these giant investments, um, and whenever you have like you know, you were saying that uh, the Band of Brothers stuff was delayed. Um, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and I, I can't remember who exactly uh, was the the main contributor behind that. We'll we'll say it's I, I think it might have been Universal or maybe it might have been HBO. One of the two. Um, it was, I think it was uh, it was it was um, HBO with DreamWorks. Um, okay. And uh, Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg. Okay, so with that being the case, um, DreamWorks uh, and HBO are fucking multi billion dollar companies um if they want to delay something they can afford to pay everybody and still maybe potentially recoup their losses i mean that's 99.9 percent of the time that's what movies are and large large uh release television shows is you throw a whole bunch of money in at the start at the onset you know let's say uh 80 million 100 or you we'll just go with 100 million that's a nice round number um, you go in with a hundred million and then you just sit there with your fingers crossed, hoping that it makes its money back. Um, because that's, you know, yeah. that's show business, baby. Um, so with that being the case, yeah. oh, go ahead. Will. no, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Okay. It's the, the margins that RPGs operate under are much tighter. Oh yeah. No, a hundred percent. So with that being the case, I can see. I can see why they wouldn't want to not release it. That makes sense to me. You've already invested all this amount of money. You've paid your freelancers. You've paid your development team. You, you've, paid, you've paid everybody that has contributed to it thus far. So now you're essentially trying to recoup your losses. Or not losses, but you're trying to recoup your investment. Now, I get the point of go ahead and, go ahead and fucking release it. That's fine. But... You can delay it. If you delay it two months, if you delay it a month, I mean, there have been so many companies right now that have stopped whatever it is that they were going to be releasing at this time, specifically because we don't want to take away from what's going on in the world right now. So therefore, they've moved their they've moved their stuff back a month. They've moved their stuff back six months. There there are some things that have been canceled completely because of it. But mm -hmm. it shows at least a modicum of respect for the current times. It shows a, a realization that, well, perhaps this might be taken in a certain way, and it's a bit tone deaf. So maybe we push it back, hell, three weeks. And that shows we have enough respect for what's going on in the world to not release it at this time. And then you just release it a couple weeks later whenever nobody's really paying attention to you anymore. That's the, I mean, that's the standard base bullshit of every corporation or company. You know, as long as you're in the limelight doing something negative, don't do the negative thing. The second that limelight gets pulled out, pulled off of you, go ahead and do it then. But at least then you have this, um, if we're being <clears throat> frank, this completely arbitrary does nothing um act that shows you have a bit of solidarity with the movement now and i and i did read further into this into this statement you know paizo has um has helped with uh yeah they contributed the starfinder core rulebook to the fight for racial justice charity which raised three million seven hundred thousand dollars to the naacp race forward in the bail project um, and they're also going to donate a portion of the proceeds from agents of the Edgewatch uh, to the NAACP, which, you know, 
awesome, guys. Good job. Um, you know, but just, just push it back a couple weeks. You know, push, push it back a week. Just at the very least, show that you're willing to take a second, take a breath, and then move it. I mean, whenever you sit there and look at, and now I'm going to start getting into, like, business theory and shit. Um, side note, not a business major. Don't know, I don't know a whole hell of a lot about business. This is all just practice. This is all, uh, this is all real world experience and practice talking. Whenever you sit there and you're running a company, you're not looking at your profit margins by the month. You're looking at your profit margins by the quarter. And I mean, right now, as it stands, there's three months to a quarter. Yeah, we're getting to the end of the second quarter. I mean, sometimes you have bad quarters. Sometimes your quarterly earnings aren't that great. And if this is your if this is your like quarters tr- like main product, you've already made a mistake by releasing it at the end because you know you're not going to get full sales figures. So from the way that it looks like they release this, it looks like this is going to be their third quarter's f- first item that's going to be marked up on their first quarter earning or, or th- their third quarter earnings. With that being the case, you've got three months that you can release this thing in in that third quarter. Pick a different time. I'm a shitty devil's advocate because I'm literally taking the other side already. <laughs> well, here's the thing. What prompted me to see this was Paizo responded to the protests very appropriately. They released a really good statement about the issue and specifically listed names of people who had been murdered. I don't, they didn't use the term murdered. I think that's probably lawyer speak. You know, they, if, if a big company uses the term, they could be liable for certain things. Slander. So, all right, I'll give them a, I'll give them a pass. Um, and they specifically, you know, said Black Lives Matter, Justice for George Floyd, and they're spearheading their charity fundraising initiative to directly support black communities, part of which you talked about. But then... Someone um, who I think is real. He's really he he works on with Pathfinder, I think. But he it, it's a little odd. He says he's not on the Pathfinder Adventure Path team, but he also says let's use the Pathfinder Adventure path our flagship line so i don't know if he works with pathfinder or paizo or not but jason tondro said but what i do know is that art provides an opportunity to engage with different topics and model good behavior i mean yes we could just never write about police or law enforcement but isn't that a kind of a cowardly way out a forgive me cop out and i'm like you made that joke Right now? <sighs> All right. And, and, and he goes on and on, you know, about why don't we show people what good cops should be like in your game? This is a little game. This is, yes, gaming is important. Yes, gaming can and is, can be and is high art. And it can make some very meaningful stories. Your Pathfinder game is not going to, quote, model good behavior and promote the way things should be in wider society, especially when you're putting cops as the topic. Yes, there are good people who are cops, but the main argument, we won't get into where we stand specifically on this argument, but the main argument of the protesters is right now is you can be a good person who is a cop, but it is impossible in the environment that exists right now to be a good cop because the system is systemically racist and corrupt. And you're now just parroting the points that the protesters are themselves saying, hey, what the heck is going on? And... And so whether, you know, you can argue to specific degrees about which parts of that are correct, which parts aren't, whether, whether there are good, there are good police departments, et cetera, that, and that's fine. That's a, that's a discussion worth having, 
But my point is when you're using the exact language that is being used to dismiss the protesters in defending your game and arguing for its inclusion, that's tone deaf. That is, you have not listened at all to what is going on, have you? <laughs> yeah, and, and in today and in, in today's world, <clears throat> especially especially with the fact of how quickly media travels, how quickly it is, how quickly you can find information. Um, and I mean, the fact of that, I mean, like you said, he's literally using the exact same language of people who are dismissing the, the protesters and, and the, the mentality behind the entire protest tells me, at least me, that he's heard the terminology before. And he's he's come up there and and like he it recognized it registered that this is something that's being said so this is something that I should use, and the fact of that he's still using that terminology as a way to justify his own point, but he's using it he's using it to justify his support of the movement by using the wording that is not in support of the movement. Um, yeah, like you say, I mean that's that's completely tone deaf and. If you're somebody who is putting yourself out as, I mean, let's be honest, an arbiter for the company, then you should you should take that into account. I mean, if you can't be trusted to make your own statements without, you know, putting the company's name on it, then maybe you need to talk to, I don't know, your company's marketing team. You need to talk to your company's, uh, <laughs> oh, what is the fucking word that I'm thinking of? Uh, the person who talks to the public inside of a company. Public relations. Thank you. Public relations. Um, you should talk to your public relations manager and just say, hey, look, this is what I'm thinking about saying. How do you think it's going to go? And and then your public relations guy is going to look at that and just go, are you fucking kidding me right now? No, you can't and say again, that. And again... Again, I don't know if Jason Tondro is actually associated with Paizo or not. His thread is a little muddled. I have no. I, he, Here's the question, though: Does he use de developer for developer for the Starfinder RPG? So, I, so he's at least associated via Starfinder. Okay, but here's the question, though: Does he use uh, terminology that makes it appear that he is a representative of Paizo or of the property that he is discussing? Well. The first tweet is uh, the second tweet in the thread is literally let's start with the obvious I'm not on the Pathfinder AP team I am neither of these three people who are wise enough to avoid Twitter so what I'm saying here is just my opinion he okay. does say he he does re he does present it as himself but he's still carrying water for the property yeah in the sense of trying to defend it and say let's not judge it before it comes out and it, 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 it's like. Yes, you absolutely can judge things as they come out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, that, that, is, that is how we stop bad shit from coming out. Yeah, and, uh, and Opti said on, uh, on Facebook, which, by the way, what's going on, Opti? Good to see you, buddy. Um, how can you be a developer for Starfinder and not represent Paizo in some regard? That is an actually, it's a really good fucking point. Um, you know, if you're if you're somebody that is choosing to to work for a company and that you're going to be a a large member of a of that company, and I mean let's let's be honest, if you're a main developer, you're, you 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 got some pretty good stroke in that company. Um, everything that you're going to say, uh, it's just like Demian just said, you got a big stake, your words are going to matter, and people are going to take it that you are speaking for the company. And, I mean, yeah, it sucks that you can't have your own opinions. I mean, whenever it comes down to it, any like me, for instance, Riot House is not that big of a company. I mean, I'm, I'm, I will readily admit that. We're fucking four people, max. And even then, like, one of us is a freelancer that we just bring on as, like, a co-host. Hi, hi, little Mac. Uh, sucks you're not here, buddy. Uh, hope you're doing well. I know you're going through some shit. If you're watching, I really hope you're doing good. Uh, but... Regardless, um, everything that I say, even if I say it as this is my opinion, these opinions do not reflect Riot House as a whole, blah, 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 
it's still going to be taken that I am somebody who speaks for Riot House. I am our mouthpiece. Uh, just like Big Mac is our mouthpiece. I mean, when it comes down to it, everything that I say, everything that Big Mac says, it holds weight for what Riot House stands for. Now, admittedly, I I am a much more controversial asshole than, than Big Mac is. Um, and a lot of that has to do with that's just my personality. And that's part of the reason why, like... He kind of has to keep me in check sometimes because there's been plenty of times that I've wanted to just like go on a fucking tweet storm about stuff and just basically tell people to fuck off because they're assholes and stop being fucking dicks. And then, you know, Big Max had to like, like pull the collar back a little bit, just be like, all right, all right, hold on a second. There's no need to get involved in this. Um, but, you know, I, I recognize that. And we're, I mean, what, how much, you know what? I'm just going to check this right now. Uh, we've got 94 followers on Twitch. We've got 107 people who follow us on Facebook. We are I, I, by no means a large conglomerate. And we have, and we have 10 subscribers. I mean, right now we have eight people watching us. Like in no way are we fucking gigantic, but even I know that everything that I say is going to hold weight. Everything that I'm saying right now is going to be a representation and a representative of the core beliefs of Riot House. So if you're going to sit there and tell me, yes, sir, yet, good job. Thank you, uh, Big Mac, for, for you know keeping me honest about that. Just going to take some time. But if I, I mean, I, I'm this tiny little company that I've got here, I know that I'm representative of what the company stands for. I know that anything that I say in a public forum can be taken that it's going to be from the mouthpiece of Riot House. And if you're going to sit there and tell me, as a developer, with Paizo, one of the one of the biggest fucking conglomerates in tabletop gaming now, and you're going to sit there and tell me that, oh, well, you know, my personal opinion, you know, doesn't uh, doesn't hold weight. You know, it doesn't hold, it doesn't keep with, uh, you know, what Paizo believes or anything like that. If you're going to sit there and try and tell me that, then obviously you're a fool. And you don't understand your own clout, you don't understand your own company, and you don't understand how this shit works. And if that be the case, maybe you shouldn't be on fucking Twitter. I mean, you know, that's, but maybe that's my opinion. And, and honestly, that's my opinion. I mean, I, I could be wrong. But at the same time, I don't think I am. <coughs> well, there... There's a related example, and this is the one where we're definitely going to talk about the tougher aspect of how am I doing this? Um, interesting. Uh, Optimistics uh, posts are not showing up in my copy of the chat. Uh, yeah, they're they're, they're, they're coming this. in. They're coming in from Facebook. Um, uh, which neat. I'll go ahead and, uh, okay. I'll go ahead and read it out real quick. Um, uh, Opti said that at the same time, I struggle with cancel culture, not because I don't want to call out shit birds and get people to not buy their stuff on a personal level. I hate shunning shit people bird. instead of calling them out, but remaining in a relationship with them to give them space to change. I'm open to a conversation about it though. But having said that, I think that if you're at the very top of an industry, cancel away, especially for people defending racism, sexual harassment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And <clears throat> excuse Agreed. me. Uh, very good statement. Very good. Yeah, and and I I 100% agree with that. I mean, if you're if you're a representative of you know <laughs> one of the biggest conglomerates in gaming, if you say some fucked up shit, you deserve to get called out for it. And if you say some real fucked up shit, you deserve to get canceled for it. You know, because I'm I'm not I'm not big on cancel think... culture either. Like I don't I don't want people to be completely canceled unless you know they're just just fucking complete and absolute garbage human beings. Which ever since I've been working on my mental health, I'm I'm changing my opinion that people are just inherently garbage to begin with, and it, you have to try to be good. But, you know, there are, in fact, there are good people out there. I do believe that they exist, which is something I never thought I'd say. But in general, I just, I think, I, I, I have the belief 
in my soul that sometimes people say shit bird shit and they can change. But at the same time, there's another part of me that's like, if you're a fucking shit bird, you need to be called out for it because if you don't get called out for it, you're not going to change. Anyway, well, I'll let you get to your point that you were getting at. Uh, go ahead. Well, a bit of a, a bit of a digression before I dive into that, uh, yeah. because this is a good part of why we talk about tone deafness in gaming. Um, one thing that, um, who am I thinking of? Christopher Hitchens, um, the British uh, socialist journalist, um, said that really made me admire. I, I'm not a socialist per se, but um, one thing that he said that made me admire certain elements of the Trotskyist movement is that a lot of the value of Trotskyist socialism was that it was incredibly self-critical. Uh, they would sit and argue their premises over and over with each other. Um, just so that they could be sure. They, they, he called it um, a sort of micro where you would split the difference between, you know, whether the Soviet Union was a case of state capitalism or a developed socialist state. And that's just completely impenetrable to to me, it, you know, as a discussion, because I'm not up on economic and political social theory in that sense. Ah, cancel Usagi. Yeah, cancel, cancel the fuck out of me. Um, <laughs> but the, um, the, so we need to do that. We need to adopt that kind of mindset. Are the actions we're taking worthwhile and strong? Not to the point of paralyzing us from acting, like the uh, arguments between the, Judean People's Front and the People's Front of Judea uh, in um, Life of Brian. But, yeah, that's why you listen to me, folks. Pop culture references from decades ago. Uh, <laughs> the um, the point is we need, to, we, we need to argue, are we doing the right thing? And I agree with the concept of call someone out and then try to bring them in. And only cancel when it's clear someone is not changing their behavior or if they're in such a position that not canceling them will do harm. I agree with that. In, um, but what drove me up the wall with what uh, Jason Tondro said was that, dare I say it, a cop out? No, you don't dare say it, you motherfucker. Cops are murdering people. It's not funny. It's, it's wrong. It's toxic. It is making light, however inadvertently, of people being murdered. So that combined with the I'm associated with this big company angle that seems seems to be in effect here, you know, dude deserves a smear. Idiot. You know, and that, that parlays into the more intense topic of today. This is where we're going to talk about, I'm, I'm going to mention what it's about, give folks a minute to think about whether they want to be here. I am going to be talking about the torture and murder of gay people, LGBT people in Chechnya uh, a few years ago. Now, feel free, anybody um, who feels like this might be a content warning um, or triggering or anything like that, uh, we do not hold it against you. Um, if you uh, <clears throat> if you want to bow out of this discussion, um, that is that is perfectly fine. Uh, we we will not be offended. We understand that some of these topics are a bit heavier and uh, are not. Are not good for uh, for some people's mental health, and one of the big things, as as is very obvious, in uh, in the way we do things, is we are we believe that your mental health is a thousand times more important than having you as as just another view count, because we care about you as people, but these are things that still do need to be talked about. So, I will not I will not be talking specifically about what happened with it that's that information is available elsewhere 
it's not my place because I'm not deeply, thoroughly informed for, for it. So that's not what I'm going to be talking about, but I am going to be using it as a springboard into a discussion of one of the other legends of the gaming community, White Wolf. So with that out of the way, a few years back, Vampire the Masquerade was put into its fifth edition, uh, its newest edition. This is not related directly to the, um, uh, who were they called? Onyx Path Publishing uh, reprints, the, the, the 20th anniversary editions that were kickstarted on Twitter. This is a different thing. Um, this, this, this is Vampire Fifth, which was... Uh, by White Wolf itself, which is currently owned by Paradox Interactive, the people who make Hearts of Iron, uh, Europa Universalis, uh, and Stellaris, uh, and a variety of related games. Um, in addition to publishing their own stuff, Paradox picks up other studios and has them publish things like uh, the Battletech games by Harebrained. Uh, they're operating under the Paradox umbrella. Uh, Hairbrain Schemes, who did the really wonderful Shadowrun Returns uh, games. So, all that to set this in Vampire Fifth Edition, uh, in one of in some of the books, uh, the, the version the the Vampire Fifth Edition Camarilla book. Camarilla is one of the factions in uh, the Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, a theme and in Camarilla and Anar, um, some really toxic crap got published. And how do I put this? They basically took what was at that time still an ongoing major news story and is still, to be perfectly honest, ongoing. It just isn't getting attention anymore. Thanks, society. Um, in Chechnya, they were trying to organize a pride parade, and what resulted was a massive crackdown where police were kidnapping, torturing, and surveilling LGBT people. Just let the horror of that sink. It's horrible. And they put it in the book as a plot point. And to use as a springboard for storytelling ideas. And, you know, they had in-character commentary from people about it and not talking about, oh, man, this is just sheerly horrifying but they used it to talk about how, oh, in you know, in, in, in certain parts of the Camarilla, any homosexuality is bound to be seen as deviant and inappropriate. Da, 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 da. And they, they took an ongoing real life tragedy where real people are being horribly treated and printed it. I mean, that's beyond tone deaf. That is tone deaf, but it is also horrifying. It's, I mean. Okay. Um, I know. I mean, my I know. romantic partner had an emotional breakdown about this, was sobbing. Look, I, when, I, know, that, I, know, I know that we're talking about things being tone deaf, and, and, I, and I recognize that, like, then, like, that, like, tone deaf is is common but it's it's like what you said well that is that is far beyond tone deaf that that goes that goes from the point of being tone deaf to the point of being just downright disrespectful it it comes out to um frankly making light of a horrible situation and it's exploitative yeah it's exploitative thank you uh big mac um yeah it's it's exploitative of tragedy i mean Let's let's just <laughs> Oh my god. I mean 
to to use a current uh to use a current situation that everybody here in America is is very familiar with um it would be akin to white wolf saying something about the protests that are happening right now and then saying roughly you know well you know in Camarilla if you're going to be in uh, if you're going to be a black person in a Camarilla you then you can just be expected for it to be considered di- really come on like you're 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 expo- exploiting other people's pain for a fucking plot point. I just I don't know what the fuck to do with that. Anyway. And it's it's not the first time that the new White Wolf, because these are not the people who started it per se. The current White Wolf staff described themselves as quote a bunch of Swedish edge lords. Um, <laughs> They, 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 they reprinted, and I, I don't, I don't buy the reprinting defense, and I'll explain why. They, they printed something in the uh, the fifth edition where they were talking about the Clan Bruja, which is you know a, a sort of anarchist themed clan, sort of anarchist themed clan. And they included this when describing the clan. While the clan definitely includes substantial numbers of vocal and visible outsiders, their desire for rebellion reaches as deep as the fraudster ripping off his own company, the lawyer representing the poor pro bono, the neo-Nazi claiming to be alt-right, and the basement dweller downloading thousands of movies illegally for distribution on streaming sites. And their, one of their defenses against this was that back in second edition, they may also address and assume the attitudes of street hoods, neo-Nazis, or even deadheads. Now, I don't buy that, oh, we were just including something that's always always been, you know, in the edition, and there wasn't a problem with it before. Well, one, attitudes change, and you fucking know that. You're a fucking adult. Uh, and two, you substantially rewrote it. You didn't just copy and paste. If you copied and pasted and forgot, that's one thing. You, you, but they, that, those were not the same phrase. Those were substantially rewritten in the new one and you expanded on it and, and you, 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 la- you latched it right next to someone who representing the poor pro bono. It, 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 it's, you are trying to be a jackass and it's very tone deaf to have done so. So they were already dealing with this and Paradox stepped in and said, we are not alt right. We do not tolerate anti-Semitism. We... Uh, we, um, we outright say, if you are alt-right, far-right, anti-Semitic, white supremacist, fascist, etc., our, our games are not for you, don't play. Go away. So, all right, they made a good decision. Then the LGBT in Chechnya thing nearly got printed. And at that point, Paradox stepped in and basically took um, White Wolf into receivership. They said they will not be permitted to function independently. They are now an imprint of Paradox, not a company uh, operating under Paradox. They, and, and they're doing reprints and they're fixing things. They saw that things were tone deaf and tried to correct it. They found out it got worse and they took more steps. And White Wolf right now doesn't really, I, I, I haven't seen the numbers, but I would, I would be stunned if White Wolf is making more money than Paisa. <laughs> I, would, I would be floored if they are making more money than Paisa right so I've been I've been pretty quiet uh, during during this whole thing um, because currently you know for for transparency's sake um, I am I am currently in a uh, a vampire game that is a bi-weekly thing so a lot of this uh, a lot of the and, and I don't pay attention to a lot of the like the news whenever it comes to like tabletop gaming and all that I recognize. I'm on a show where I should be, but guys, I'm just the host. I don't need to know anything. Um, (laughs) uh, But 
I... I'm fucking disgusted right now by a, a game that I enjoy, by a game that I have actively planned to buy more of said product. Um, I'm glad that Paradox is fixing things because, you know, fucking right on. Because if they weren't, I would have a really big problem with that too because... Stellaris is like my jam, and if they weren't trying to fix their subsidiaries, then I'd guess I'm not fucking playing Stellaris anymore. And all those 500 hours I've poured into it is for nothing. <coughs> um, but newbie, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> um, get get on my 2,000 hour level. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You're being real gatekeepery right now. Um, I am, I am. Cance, cancel Usagi. Cancel Usagi. He's a fucking gatekeeper. Um, anyway, so the fact of that they are they are taking mm. something that they are claiming. Oh, you know, we just used it from 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 back when. Motherfucker, that's not a goddamn excuse. <laughs> like, just because. Just because your fucking grandpa is a racist doesn't mean you can get away with being a fucking racist. You know, that's exactly. that would be Yeah, that would like them saying that oh, all we did was just take the neo-nazi thing and just reprint it cuz it's been in the system for all these fucking years. That's like me saying just cuz my grandpa uses the n-word to describe black people then that means it's okay for me cuz hell, my grandpa did it. Shut the fuck up. That's no goddamn excuse. Oh my god, this hey. I'm fucking livid about this. Like, I don't usually get like super fucking pissed about stuff, but like the idea yeah. that you're gonna fucking use shit that was fucking talked about twenty years ago as if it's okay for like an excuse? Like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it, it it's it's insane. It is. I shouldn't say that word because um, n neurotypical centrism. Um, but it's it is literally tone deaf. It is it is a complete failure to understand the new environment we live in and move with it. Now, I mean. If they were wanting to say, if they had made it clearer that because of the unique circumstances of the clan, it attracts all these sorts of people and arguments over uh, whether or not some of them are welcome or whether or, uh, ideological fights for control of the clan. Okay, I could see incorporating that. Yeah. Be because then you have, okay... I understand what you're going for. You're still touching on some edgy topics, but all right. You've at least you've at least made a caveat about it, but it but it's just no, we inc you know, we're including them in the bruja. And I don't I don't think that necessarily said that they endorsed alt-right supremacism, but the fact that they didn't make the effort to clarify it. Mhm. Mm really really struck me as obnoxious and, and it's it's fucking lazy from that no like it's let's let's yeah, just it say lazy. it's fucking lazy and there's no goddamn excuse in this fucking world right now for fucking laziness you know we've got we're we're way too right. fucking we're way too fucking forward thinking of a goddamn culture at least i fucking hope we are that there's no fucking excuse for not taking an extra fucking day to make sure that your shit's fucking <coughs> right excuse me you're fine. There's no goddamn excuse for it. If you're gonna sit there and fucking tell me, oh, you know, we didn't have we didn't have fucking time to do that, you know, blah, blah, blah. it's because you're not fucking taking the time. You have the time. You can take the fucking time. It's not that goddamn hard. Are you gonna have to push back a release date? Maybe. Who cares? Are you are you gonna have to worry about if that release date isn't fucking pushed back, and then all of a sudden you come up there and your entire fucking game gets canceled and the entire nerd community turns against you? Is that gonna be fucking worth that extra day you didn't take? Do your fucking shit. Do quality checks. That's what the fuck they exist for. God damn it. Ah, uh, man. I'm... 
Go ahead, Will. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you take the floor again because I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep fucking <laughs> yelling about this. You need a breather. I might. God damn. Uh, it's also hot as shit in this fucking room. Oh yeah, it's a, it's it's a hundred and five fucking degrees outside my door, and it's it's about ninety five inside my room at the moment because I've got the computer, I've got my light, I've got my sixty inch LED TV. <laughs> Uh, you know, just just all radiating all this glorious heat into my room, and I can't have my air conditioner on because it's like facing my mic. So I'm just loving it. Um, the this all does come back to you. What you were saying is you, you it, it's not working because you're not taking the time. The answer to all this, yeah, we're, we're, we should get into what are the answers, because we did talk earlier about, hey, we, we want to ask, are we doing the right thing with a particular can- cancel of somebody? Uh, are we approaching things correctly? We want to be self-critical. We want, and, and that's part of why we're doing this. Uh, as, as Yahtzee, the uh, professional uh, troll reviewer, uh, on uh, Zero Punctuation said, of course I point out things that are wrong with games. How else would they improve without my relentless criticism and scorn? Fair. I don't think we're quite, I don't think we're quite that bad. <laughs> but, you know, <clears throat> I mean, he actually talks about how Peter Mullen knew himself contacted Yahtzee after Yahtzee's review of Fable and said, hey, maybe you'll like Fable too." You know, I tried to address some criticism. And, and it's like, if, if Peter Molyneux, the most disconnected man from reality, <laughs> can, can have that much self-awareness to contact a YouTube critic, you know, then, then maybe someone who's writing a book can contact people and say, hey, can we get some tone checks on this? And the bad part is it's not that fucking hard to do it. Like, I can well, think the of... Air, the I, answer is so easy. I, I, can, I, can think, I can think of literally three people off the top of my head right now who can give fucking tone checks like that. I mean... One is in the chat, and two are on the fucking screen. Look, fucking hire me. I will look at your shit and tell you where you need to go unfuck yourself. Like, it's not fucking difficult. Demian, I don't know you very well, so I couldn't really speak to you as far as that's concerned. So, you know. But, and then whenever it comes down to it, I mean, if you need if you need fucking LGBT people to fucking do it. I mean, how, how many fucking LGBT nerds are there out there? How many that play these fucking games? Just wild guess. Fuck it. Let's let's actually do this exercise. Wild guess. How many do you think there are? 100? 50? 10 fucking thousand? I mean, a lot of people... And, and we talked about this... God, what was it? Three, four weeks ago? Hell, might have been two months ago? Um, on a different Nerdcast... That a lot of uh, a lot of trans people use tabletop gaming as a way to um, as a way to explore different parts of themselves as different uh, maybe different gender as a different race or whatever you know they're using it as a way to explore those parts of their of their gender identity and their sexuality. Ask one of fucking them to do it. If you're going to include these these fucking racy topics in your shit, ask somebody to double check it and make sure that it comes off as as either um if if not if not trying to make it not tone deaf, make it at least respectful. Make it to where whenever somebody from the LGBT community looks at it, they're not just going to go, "What in the fuck is this guy doing?" Like like this is just <laughs> All of this is just like fucking bullshit. It's it's not fucking hard. You have the goddamn you you have the clout. You have the fucking um you have the fan base for it. Just put out a fucking call. Well, he, 
Well, here's the thing. The, the, answer is, the answer to all of these problems is what we're talking about here is really fucking simple. It's what black folks, it's what minority folks in general, it is um, LGBTI folks have been telling us for decades, for centuries, sit down, shut up, listen, and, listen. and unfuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's going to be like the, the fucking catchphrase of this goddamn episode. <laughs> Quick, re- rename it. Uh, not your normal nerd cast. Unfuck, unfuck yourself. yourself. <laughs> yeah, li- li- I think, I think um, that might be the name of, uh, of what it's going to be on the YouTube is uh, it'll just be uh, it'll it'll be tone deaf in this uh, tone deaf in gaming. Unfuck yourself, <laughs> uh, Big Mac. Since the you're thing, the one running the YouTube, do me a favor. Write that down. <laughs> uh, best ideas ever are the ones you have on the spur of the moment when you're. Yeah, it um, is. But unfuck yourself, unfuck yourself, most, yourself Ricky most Ricky Tick. Exactly, <laughs> most Ricky Tick. Uh, um, that's great. Ricky Ticky Toffee. Um, the um, I was. I think we can agree. You know, you and I being who we are, mm-hmm. we can agree that the people most least likely to listen and unfuck themselves are conservative American fundamentalist Baptists. I went to Pensacola Christian College, one of the three er colleges of fundamentalist reactionary Christianity. Mm-hmm. And the pastor, um, Pastor Shetler, was talking about a black baseball player who had horrible slurs shouted at him. And he used one of these slurs when quoting what the people were shouting at him. And it was very clear from the context he was using it as, look at the horror this man went through Mm -hmm. for doing, for being good at a sport and black. It was very clear he was not endorsing the use. Yeah. The very next service, he got up and said, I used a word the other day in my service about you know, names the baseball player. And I was very clear that it was inappropriate. I was very clear as to the fact that it was evil people using it. But some of the parishioners here came to me and said, because this was uh, on the campus chapel. Yeah. Uh, he was our preacher, basically. And he said, and they told me that it made them feel uncomfortable. And you know what? I should have asked before I did it. I was wrong and I am so sorry. I never want you to feel uncomfortable in my church as far as, as far as being black in my church. I want you to feel like you can be here and that, that someone will not use that word. I did not understand the trauma of it. And I am so sorry. I'm like, this was a conservative Baptist reactionary preacher. It's further proof and that everybody he, un- he unfucked himself. <laughs> exactly. Um, I just want to make sure that I do point out um, Sarah Lewis on our Facebook. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for coming to hang out. We really appreciate you being here. Um, said, don't speak for the people without asking the people. If you're not in the queer culture, then you don't know our pain. If you're not black, you don't know their pain. But also, if you want to take someone's time to ask them, pay them for that time and their energy. And, and that is, that is absolutely correct. Um, I'm, I'm not trying to like, like gloss over what you were saying, uh, Will, but you, you have the opportunity with the platform that you're given and you have the audience that has, that has these people in it. It's not that fucking hard to ask. It's not that fucking hard to put a to put a call out to your audience and it's not that fucking hard to allow them a little bit of your fucking soapbox that you're standing on to get their fucking message out. I mean, literally the entire the the entire point of this channel as we proved 
Uh, fuck, two weeks ago? Three, maybe? Can't remember the dates because time is fluid and is a concept. Um, but that's part of the reason why we <laughs> shut our fucking channel down for a day. And we allowed a, uh, we allowed a friend of the show, Tez, as a black man, to come on. I, m- I muted myself. It was, okay, yeah, it was two weeks ago. Um, I, I put myself in a, in a, in the bottom corner. I made sure that he had the complete screen to himself so that he could talk about his experience being a black man in America. That is the, I mean, we can do it. I mean, admittedly, yeah, we're small. So we like, we, and and, well, actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, that's actually a mark against us. Um, we're small. We don't have the broad fan base that you do. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that we have LGBTQ uh, people in our audience. I know that we have black people in our audience. I know that we have, uh, we have, we have members. I mean, we're, we're fucking all inclusive here. Um, we've got, we've got people from every single walk of life. And if we want to get any kind of an opinion on any topic that we're going to be trying to discuss, I will post the thing on Twitter. Hey, anybody that listens to us, this is what we're going to be discussing this week. Do you want to come on and talk? And by the way, anybody watching right now, do you want to come on and talk? Fucking give us a topic. We'll give you the platform. Um, and it's, I mean, that we, we literally can fucking do this. So why can't you? You have a billion times the fucking, uh, the stroke. You have a billion times the fucking viewership and you have thousands more people looking at your shit than we do. But you just, you, you can't think to just be like, hey, you know... Maybe before putting this book out, we should, like, oh, I don't know, like, maybe have somebody read it? Like, come on. Um, okay, so I'm seeing that we're bookmarking things. What uh, What do we need to get back to? Um, Damien uh, mentioned, I have my own side argument from the peanut gallery. Can we admit wrong and can we write better in games? Could you post a clarifying comment uh, as to what you mean, uh, B? Um, <laughs> I, I do, I do want to uh, talk about what you're saying, but I want to be clear, a hundred percent clear as to what you're saying. Also, um, also, I want, I want to, I want to eat this slice of watermelon because it's delicious and I'm very hot. Uh, also, you would, you would ask, uh, do I believe something? Um, I don't know what part you're talking about. I've gone on quite, uh, I've, I've gone on quite a rant. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, and, and Mac, you have All a really right. good point. He says he's, Go ahead. he says he's typing the clarification, so we'll let that happen. Okay. Go ahead. Um, Mac, so yeah, like how is it that we as a small channel have more oversight than larger entities? Okay, so I, I feel like, I feel like I can answer that in a way. Um, the reason that we have better oversight is because we have less people. Um, it's very easy for, for you to check me, me to check you. Super simple. As long as we're communicating about it. If I come up there and I decide to just go fucking ham and go off the cuff on something without, without checking with Mac to see if, uh, to see if like, you know, hey, what do you think of this? Then there's no there's no way that you can have oversight over me. Exactly like if you decide to go off the cuff and just decide, you know what, I'm going to post a whole bunch of shit on my thing and and I'm I'm not going to ask James what his opinions are on it. But at the same time, it's super easy for us to have oversight over us because we're just two people. Um but it's also super easy in a large company to have oversight because it's just a matter of, I don't know, getting with the people who are in charge of these things. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not that difficult of a process to, when you create a product, look at the people who have created this product, ask them what they've put in this product, and then have somebody check their work. I, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't see how it can be that difficult. Especially if you, if, I mean, you do, you do 99.9% of your shit through freelancing anyway. So just hire a freelance content checker. 
Um, the you know, um, quite the, the the restated question is basically when we see all this, you know, can we keep playing? Can we do better? And you know, I feel like that's kind of what we're tra- touching on, but more specifically, how can we do better about this stuff? And the first one we're talking about is hire people to make sure your stuff is better. <laughs> hire people from the communities you're going to be touching on. Stop hiring people from the communities that are bad. <laughs> like, like, fuck, what's his name? Um, so now, not Warren... hiring people from communities that are bad. I just want to get this real quick point out. It is very easy for neo-Nazis, racists, and bigots to hide. Because all they have oh, to do yeah. is yeah. not speak. And because of that, for a little while, and then they then later they'll speak exactly. And because of that, um, it's it's very very easy for you to accidentally hire those type of people. So absolutely. So while I say you know, or like while you say you know, don't hire people from the bad side of things. I I highly doubt that places are going out to you know clan rallies and alt right fucking meetings and just being like, (laughs) you want to write for an RPG. Um, I highly doubt that that's what they're doing, but at the same time, the way that you can fix that is the second a motherfucker says some racist shit, you put a boot in his ass and you kick him the fuck out of the club and you don't, you don't do, you don't wait. You don't, you don't take a second to be like, well, maybe we can do some sensitivity training. No, if this dude comes up there and says some racist ass fucking shit, you get him the fuck out. And that also goes back to right. other other different fields as well that we discussed earlier. If you see people doing bad shit and it's against what your fucking core beliefs are as a corporation, as an entity, or as a certain part of the government, it is your responsibility to fucking stop them. Like, like go back to what you're like, saying, Will. <laughs> um, Warren fucking Ellis, one of my favorite comic writers. Um, from that same pantheon as, you know, Frank Miller and Alan Moore is he, 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 Warren Ellis wrote one of my favorite short comics, Cressy, which talks about the battle of Cressy in the hundred years war. And he wrote, um, he, he's, he's the lead force behind the new Castlevania TV uh, series on Netflix. Wonderful, intense stuff. He's been on the Twitter uh, for people pointing out this man grooms and sexually abuses women. And, 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 and fuck. So I'm not going to be watching Castlevania ever again. You know, unless they kick him the fuck out and redo it from go. I mean, they don't have to redo the previous episodes, obviously. You know, it's they're there. But, you know, unless they bring in a whole new staff right now, kick that fucker to the goddamn curb. You know, it, it, it's how do we do better? We kick it. We kick the fucker to the curb. And, and that's the point of hiding. He's so famous that this stuff, Isaac, Isaac Asimov, people would basically warn women not to be alone with him. Would say, don't be walking ahead of him on a stairwell. He will grab you, your ass. Isaac Asimov, the, the guy Carl Sagan would have fucking lunch with. Now, with that being said, this also brings up the idea of can we separate the art from the artist? That of the author, etc. I, I'm of two minds about that, personally. So, can you separate... Can you separate the art of of someone like we'll we'll use I don't know 
I guess we could use Lovecraft as an example because that's the one that's popping into my head right now. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, and I, I'm not 100% sure, and I, I guess, I mean, I've got the sum total of human knowledge right here, so I could easily just look it up. H.P. Uh, Lovecraft was an anti-Semite. Was that, wasn't that his thing? Or or was he just dead-ass oh, racist? Oh, and, 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 and all of it. He, okay. he was virulently white supremacist. Okay. So it was, and it it was it, it did not moderate throughout his life. It was a full throated roar okay. from the time he was a young man till the time he died, which frankly didn't come soon enough. Um, but and probably wasn't painful enough. So let's it was let's a bowel cancer. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it could have been more painful. Um, so <laughs> I don't abide a racist. Sorry, I'm not sorry. I don't know why I said I was sorry. I apologize too much. Um, so let's let's take Lovecraft I... as an example. Can you separate the art from the artist? Absolutely, you can separate the art from the artist. The big thing is, is the art still supporting that artist? That's the question that I ask myself whenever I whenever I think about buying something that is is made by a problematic creator. Is that art going to be supporting that artist and as such supporting their viewpoints and supporting their agenda? If it is, I don't buy it because that's not separating the art from the artist. Because if there is, if there is art out there by somebody and they are still alive and they are still going to make money off of that art, then no, you can't separate the two because you're going to be by, – by buying this thing, you're tangentially supporting what they stand for. <coughs> But if the artist is dead and the – excuse me. Um, if the artist is dead or if they have been so far removed from their own product due to their bullshit and as such cannot profit, gain, or otherwise benefit from their art, then absolutely I can separate the art from the artist because – I'm not supporting well, them. Go on. <laughs> Here's the thing. You pick you might have picked the absolute worst art to discuss removing separating the Art from the artist. Just so everybody's aware, I've never bought a Lovecraft thing in my fucking life. So, you know. You, you, the entire concept of cosmic horror uh, that, that Lovecraft posited was, yes, it was a reaction to all the major revelations of science and the existentialism, for lack of a better term, of man's place as insignificant in the universe, yada, yada. But it also derived immensely from his racism. The horror at Red Hook, his most bigoted story, is just teeming with horrible commentary on the minorities in um, New York and was written as a result of him having lived in New York for a little while with his um, new wife. And he describes black folks as degenerate. He describes mixed race people as devolving from, you know, the white template. And he describes things in virulently racist terms throughout many of his stories. Mm -hmm. The ones that don't are, sim are are practically just pure dream trips, like uh, I think the white ship and Polaris might not have overt racism in them. Might, I can't even say for sure, because it's been a while since I read them. Mm -hmm. But because... At, as you might tell, I'm not deeply inclined in reading his shit anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very hard to separate the art from the artist because the art was an expression of the artist 
Yeah, and and that's and that's right. actually a that's actually a very fair point. And you know, and and like I said, and like you said, Lovecraft is probably the worst example to use for that. Uh, and one thing that uh, I think it's the yeah. ans- the the answer is. Um, I'm pretty sure that that's how that's pronounced. Uh, if you can't separate the art from the artist, you have to throw out the entire literary canon. Um, I mean, that's a that's actually a fair point for me, at least, because, you know, anybody that wrote anything, in my opinion, except for, you know, ancient history, let's, okay, you know what, we'll just, we'll limit it to America. Fine. Anybody that wrote anything pre-19... God, do I want to go as recent as 80? Yeah, I guess I'll go as recent as 80. Anybody that's written anything in America pre-1980 is probably going to have skeletons in their closet. Um, They're probably going to have some problematic bullshit in their writing somewhere. They're probably going to have something that they said at some point that is racist, bigoted, misogynistic, or otherwise. So... The point of if you can't separate the art from the artist, you have to throw everything out kind of rings true in that situation because there are great literary works that were fucking written by complete and total scumbags. But that doesn't take away from how good the literary work was. So it's 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 a bit of a slippery slope whenever you think of, you know, if if. <laughs> If the artist was a shitbird, then you can't, and I then you can't separate their art from it, and it. Mu- I mean, and then there's the whole idea of anything that has to do with these people should be destroyed and or otherwise not made available for other consumption, which g- opens up what, a whole another can of worms. <laughs> what you're talking about is literally the argument between uh, the the new critical school of literary criticism and the contextualist. Um, Contextualist is shorthand for a variety of critical disciplines, but the idea is contextualists place their work, the work of an artist, entirely in context. Like... What are the what are what is the time frame? Shushaku Endo, when he wrote Silence, well, if he was, you know, he's Japanese. He's writing about Christianity in Japan. He he's, you know, this is the stuff that was going on in his life at the time. This is his relationship to religion and Catholicism. He, here are the historical factors of uh, the Portuguese mission, Jesuit missions to Japan. Yada yada. New criticism uh, argues that. The text, uh, uh, to borrow a phrase from Christianity, sola scriptura, uh, the book is all that matters, only the book. So you read it very closely and you only analyze the book from what is on the page. Mm -hmm. And um, there's value, I think, in both approaches. Um, I still, I'm not inclined to lately just because, you know, there are so many not racist assholes I could read, but (laughs) I can still read Lovecraft because I'm just going to be perfectly honest the shadow out of time is one of my favorite stories I mean, and not the shadow yeah the shadow out of time um is one of my favorite stories of all time it is it is a masterwork in creating unsettling imagery without any overt well, but very little overt danger, mm-hmm. and it is it is it is a great example of horror over terror, and I love it. But I can't deny that in it he talked positively about how the aliens had a swarm of socialistic fascism or fascistic socialism. I forget how he phrased it, but one of the two. Um, and it's like. <laughs> this is awkward. So it's very hard to read new critically, but that's essentially what the death of the author as a concept comes out of the new criticism yeah. that you just go with the text and what the text is saying. And that's not to say that you, that new criticism is, you know, solely accepting of works. You can find stuff directly in various works that is itself toxic needs to be called out 
Um, but God, we've really gotten far afield, haven't we? The we point have. is the 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 point of all this dilly dallying is we've spent. I I I can almost guarantee you we have spent more time on this stream thinking about what White Wolf and Paizo put into these stories than they did as as touches on tone deafness. Yeah. Which is further now, it's easy which is to further proof do that after the fact. Yeah. Well, I mean and it also it also further proves the idea that it doesn't take that much to figure that shit out. I mean, we've been on so far, I mean, stream clock is an hour 35. Um, we started about 10 minutes after I, uh, after I started the stream. So we've been at this almost an hour and a half, almost 90 minutes. And like you said, we've, we've already put more time in than they did. So, um, or more time than is evident that they put in because (laughs) from the publication, it's not evident that they put the time. Yeah, exactly. I'm willing to allow that they did it, but if if they did, then I'm angrier. (laughs) Yes, please, please tell us who your content checker was, because I would like to have words with them. Chief among those words, what the fuck? Unfuck yourself. Unfuck yourself, exactly. Um, and then I will go. I will walk something. I don't think that this. I'm not even walking something back. I don't know why I said that. Um, I don't think that this necessarily condemns White Wolf or Paizo or other gamer uh, institutions as, you know, cancel culture. Uh, you know, let's cancel a bra. Adam Driver is canceled party. Um, but I, I think that, especially in the case of White Wolf, they grappled with it and they proceeded for. They, it, what was really interesting was in the um, in the White Wolf uh, story in general, they talked about how repeated they kept bumping into these issues repeatedly and were being made to feel stupid. Mm-hmm. But they did the work anyway. They corrected. Uh, I think in the first printing of Vampire 5, the neo-Nazi comment went out. It was just too late. The stuff was on the way, uh, or already in people's hands. There was just no, no pulling that horse back into the barn. Um, but they fixed it going forward. Excuse me, my goodness, that was a burp. Um, yeah. They fixed things going forward and they corrected. And you know, to be fair, in comparison to the fact that Paiso directly contributed to and helped raise Alf. Fuck ton of for social justice. That's good. I I think that is good enough to outweigh the problem. But you know, as the answer is is saying, representations in popular culture which glorify officers contribute to systemic racism. The notion of the police officer as the hero has resulted into in obliviousness to brutality against minorities. Again, without going into the condemn everyone angle, which, you know, I understand that, like, like for, again, a digression, a friend of mine on another community, their parent is a police officer. And someone on the community was posting about a police station that burned down. And this friend of mine was really upset because, look, I get it. I do. But, you know, now I'm terrified that my parents going to get killed. And, you know, you can argue, well, should they be a cop? <laughs> you know, quit. <laughs> but I, so I understand you, you have to be very careful when making statements about it. But I agree that popular culture representations have the potential to do tremendous harm. And most things have more potential to do harm then they have potential to do good. Portraying good cops, I don't think a Paizo game is going to, doing that in a Paizo game is going to contribute to 
reversing the way police behave, but contributing to the police are automatically heroic mindset that leads to some of what we're seeing. I can see that happening. Mm -hmm. It's always assume that you're going to do harm with something you do when you're checking if it's good. <laughs> always assume there is some harm that can be done. How do I mitigate it? And I don't think they did that with this uh, document. Yeah. And regardless of the fact that they have done good with raising the money. Well, and, and, you know, it's one of those things too, you know, you, I, I like what you said a second ago where, you know, assume, and, and I might be, I might be misquoting this, but, um, the assumption that you need to make when putting anything out, especially if it's controversial, is that it's going to do more harm than good. And, I like that as just kind of a general rule of thumb whenever it comes to releasing controversial products. But the question, the question, because then the question doesn't come, is this going to do harm or is it going to do good? The question becomes, is the harm that this is going to do minor enough that it could potentially be beneficial? Um, or is the harm that this is going, or is there any, any harm that this will do? Is there any light that this can be taken in that it will do some form of harm? Be, and if you're looking at it through the, through the lens of everything, everything is going to do harm before it does any good, then it gives you a better point of reference to start from. Because if you're starting from the idea that, you know, well, well we're, we're going to do good with this. This is going to be a good product that's going to make positive change. Then you're going to look at it through the light of this was the intent of the product was to do a good thing. So you're going to be looking for the good in it. If you, if you release your product with the mentality of this could do harm, this potentially will do harm. And if you look at it through that lens, you're going to read through your product with the mentality of what is harmful in this. And I think that that's There's, a better way um, to look at it. Agreed. Agreed. Absolutely. There's an acronym. Uh, Demian, will, uh, Demian will recognize this acronym because they used it recently or a version of it that I, I was taught it in the context of um, emergency survival, but it really is useful in a lot of cases. Scope, stop, communicate, observe, plan, execute. The first step it's... is a really good one. Yeah. Stop, just take the time, calm down, get off the, get off the high, and then move into the next one. Communicate who's with you, who's around you. And then you get into all the other stuff. Stop and communicate. You know, that's that's where the would solve so much. Yeah. And that and that that's you know, that's why you see so many so many tropes in popular media and so many tropes in, in all of these different, you know, movies, television and all that where it says you know, whenever they're trying to, to make a big deal or make a big score, well, let me sleep on it. Let me sleep on it, and I'll call you tomorrow. That should be how every major decision should be made. That stop should be take the time to think about it. Take the time to sleep on it. You know, if it, if it seems like a good idea at, you know, I mean, we'll use arbitrary time frames here. If it seems like a good idea at 9 p.m., there's no need to submit it by midnight. Fucking look at it again in the morning because it may not be a good idea and you may just be riding that high. My, um, my grandfather, my mom's uh, father, old school Irish, uh, fought in Korea. Tough dude. Um, worked for the Environmental Protection Agency, interestingly, for a long time. Um, he had a really similar but kind of awful way of saying what you just said. He said, when you have an idea, think about it and see if it seems like a good idea. Mm -hmm. Get drunk. <laughs> see if it seems like a good idea. Try to explain it to someone while drunk. See if it's a good idea. 
then think about it again and talk to talk to them again when you're sober. <laughs> I mean, that's a that is a very Irish way to look at things. But it, I mean, it's fair though. <laughs> And, I, and it's, it's, I, I, I was very concerned you were going to go, uh, you were going to go the Joe Rogan route. What Hit, the hell is that? Uh, it's basically the same thing, except it's not getting drunk. It's, uh, I'm trying to think of a good PC way to put this. Enjoy your own company. Oh God. Yeah. That's that's his that's ah, that's how ah. he makes he makes major decisions is he he thinks about the idea enjoys his own company and then thinks about it again. Kill him. Like I said, he might benefit. I mean, I was I was very concerned that that's where you were going with it, but I was like, you know what? We're just going to ride this train out, see where it goes. <laughs> but instead uh-huh. instead of going just- to like Joe Rogan fantasies, it was, oh, we're going to go the Irish route. All right. That's better. The man, the, the man was, if he wasn't an alcoholic, he was as close to a functional alcoholic as you can get. The man liked his drink. But I will say this, never neglected the family, never, never let me down. Good grandfather um, was there for me. Uh, first member of my family I came out to. Nice. That's good, then. Um, but, uh, all that aside, that all just comes back to the greater issue of this. And, and I just, I just realized something. We've, I've been using the wrong phrase for this because Maybe we shouldn't be using the phrase tone deaf because that might be a little able. Okay. Uh, throw that to the chat. Uh, is t- is will... tone deaf an ableist term? That's that, that is that is not something that I have considered. But there is there is the possibility. I mean. I mean, it's a common phrase. When I was growing up, the common phrase to describe pretty much anyone with a mental disability, and this was the practically the this was the institutional phrase, mm-hmm. was retarded. Yeah. And it it, it 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 was the common phrase. So just because it was common phrase doesn't, doesn't mean it right. it's necessarily the right one. So maybe we can think of another way because I don't. I don't want to use that, use the phrase if it's going to... Yeah, I've actually... uh, Deaf folks, uncomfortable. Yeah, no, I've actually... Or tone deaf folks. I know tone deaf also does describe a legitimate condition, i.e. the ability to hear music, but... Yeah, no, that's uh, that's actually a really good point. Um, Until until we're able to talk to somebody... um, Yes, for people with a disability. Oh, uh, we've we've got an answer. We've got an answer from the answer. The answer is <laughs> how apt. All right, so it is a micro. All right. Okay. Well, see. Okay, we're going to fix that. Yeah. We are absolutely not going to include tone deaf anymore. After I just spent hours talking about it. Well done. Okay. Well, we'll we'll fix that because that's what good people do, and we won't we won't dwell. Don't expect an hour-long flagellation apology. We know those suck. I mean, ass ass battery. That's I like it. Frankly, I mean, frankly, that's uh, (laughs) that fits with our mo. For God's sake. Um. Yeah. uh, I mean, honestly, we we could also. I mean, we could also just use cultural insensitivity. I mean, it's the same thing. It's a little bit longer. I like ass battery better. But I mean, because the definition, of In, insensitive ass hattery, insensitive ass hattery. I like that. Yeah, because it says having or showing an obtuse insensitivity or lack of perception, particularly in ma- matters of public sentiment, opinion, or taste. 
So theoretically, it could just be uh, public insensitivity. I mean, that could be a way that we could do it, uh, or that could be a better term that other people could use because here at Riot House, it's just generic-ass hattery. Right. Thank you, Answer and Is. You've, you've been amazing and amazingly helpful. We uh, greatly appreciate you. Yeah, and I, I think... I think we'll uh, we might include a uh, mention at the beginning of the stream a content warning that you know we use the common term and we use that term throughout the recording. Mm -hmm. We have since fixed our sh we have since unfucked ourselves. <laughs> there you go. There you go. See, because it's proof that money no were well, and and I mean, and frankly, like this. Right here is is further proof that it is possible. Like, so, and I'm I'm going to use the term. Uh, we were tone deaf to how tone deaf comes off to the deaf community. So therefore, when it is pointed out to us, and when we have thought about it, we course corrected. We course corrected. We changed what we were saying, even though it is a common parlance that. Everybody and their mother uses. It doesn't change the fact of that once we found out about it, we took the effort. We're taking the time to be better. And it's not that fucking hard. Yeah, it's I mean, it's one thing to say, you know, I mean, I, it's one thing to say that, you know, for a very small thing. I understand that momentum is what it is when you have a huge big project that's moving forward and lives livelihoods are depending on it i understand there are contexts there are contexts in which correction might take time might take effort but it also involves publicly acknowledging moving on fixing the shit and coming up with immediate solutions exactly that can be done yeah some kind of solution and you know we did it here Proof and we're, practice. We're going to be better going forward. Yeah, proof and be practice better going that it forward. can happen. And a company with actual money behind can, 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 can is in a better position to solve these problems than we are. I don't like your over insinuation. Over the long term. I don't like the insinuation you just made. You think we're a company? Do that you think people have more money? Do, do you think we're a company that doesn't have money behind it? I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm just saying it's upsetting <laughs> that you assumed that. <laughs> Who says assume? I've heard you say it. <laughs> Shut up, Will. Um, with that being no, said, I be sure won't. to subscribe, and because uh, because we would love that. Uh, we we are. We are in fact, we are in fact poor, poor people, who would who would definitely enjoy a little bit of uh, a little bit of monetary incentive to continue making the product that we're going to continue to make, regardless of monetary incentive or not. But regardless, it'd be cool. Damn right. So uh, so be sure to hit that subscribe button up just right above your chat, because we would greatly appreciate it. Um, but. Uh, I think you, unless you have like another big thing that you want to get to, Will, um, do you? I think we're good. I think we're good. All right, cool. Uh, then I think that's kind of where we're going to wrap it. I mean, we're we're just about to bump up on the two hour mark. So uh, so I think this might be a good place. Um, let's go ahead and get your final thoughts, Will. <laughs> My final thoughts are basically very similar to my final thoughts from the first time you had me on. We're going to fuck this up right along with you, uh, game designers. There, but there is hope because you can unfuck yourselves. We're unfucking ourselves. You can unfuck yourselves. And a lot of these companies are trying to unfuck themselves. The White Wolf thing in particular gives me a lot of hope that you can do things the right way. It'll take a lot of try. But they kept trying. They didn't stop trying. And we shouldn't stop trying either, even if it's in a little nerd cast with a handful of people watching and talking to us who are willing to listen to our crap. 
Exactly. And I, 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 I love that y'all listen to me. I love that the answer was willing to honestly answer me and call out what I said as, yep, that's a microaggression. And that's ableist. And I said, all right, cool. So we'll fix that. And I, I appreciate that because that is what this community thrives at. We listen. This community in particular listens. We're going to keep listening. And I am so glad y'all were here to listen to us. And I really look forward to seeing y'all again. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so, I mean, that's going to be hard to follow up. So uh, thanks for that. Um, <laughs> I mean, as is... I live to... As is, uh, as is pretty much my common parlance in all these. I mean, in general, just try to be a good human. I mean, it's not, it's not difficult to just educate yourself. It's not difficult to ask those around you what you may or may not be doing wrong. Um, I... You know, I, I hang out with a lot of with a lot of black people and I grew up uh, at, from a very young age knowing and learning racist terms and using them in common parlance. And I am constantly asking, hey, like this is OK, like what I'm saying is fine, right? Like everything's cool, like I'm not doing anything like shitty. And, you know, it may it may feel like it's going to like you may feel like it's going to be awkward and there there will be times when it will. But it's not hard to ask people that you are potentially could potentially offend with your words and could potentially hurt with your words. It's not it's not that hard to ask them what their opinion is on it. It's not that hard to to get that that check and balance on yourself. It it to me it proves that you're trying to be a better person and you're trying to grow as a person. Um, if there's, if there's one thing that I've learned in these last couple of weeks with all of my therapy, it's that none of us, none of us are a fully formed, fully formed project. I mean, we're, we're all still in the process of learning. We're all still in the process of growing. We're all still in the process of building. Um, we'll never be complete ever because there's always something new to learn. There's always something new, new to, to add to ourselves. So try not to commit ass hattery in the world, and in general, I mean, follow, <laughs> follow all of the Ten Commandments as boiled down to one by the uh, the late great George Carlin. Just don't be a fucking dick. I mean, it's simple as that. Simple as. So with that, um, I have been James. Uh, that. That guy over there has been Will. Um, we greatly appreciate everybody hanging out. We appreciate everybody in the chat for for chatting with us. Uh, answer is Demian. Man, you guys are great. Opti, uh, Sarah, all all of our all of our Facebook chatters, um, all of our lurkers. Uh, we greatly appreciate all of you. Um, if you haven't, drop us a like on the channel. We greatly appreciate it. Um, no. <laughs> Wow, Will, you haven't been a follower this whole time? Like, I'm not going to shame... I really haven't. I'm not going to shame anybody in the <laughs> chat, but I will shame the guy who's on the show. <laughs> um, anyway. But uh, but thanks, everybody. Uh, be sure to drop us a follow. Um, if you're on Facebook, drop us a like over there. Uh, you know, we've got, we've got plenty of uh, video-on-demand stuff. Um, the Nerdcast has been going for... Oh god damn! It's been six months now. Yeah, we did our first nerdcast back in January. Um, so we've been doing this show for six months. Um, we've got most of the episodes on video on demand. So uh, there's a lot of really good stuff in there. Um, feel free to free free to check back on those. Um, we're on YouTube. Uh, we're going to be posting all of our all of our talk shows um, from the nerdcast. Come as you are. Uh, some of our social justice shows. Um, we're going to, we're going to be posting all of those over there on the YouTube channel. So be sure to follow and subscribe over there. Um, if you like what you hear, you know, drop us a subscribe, um, or, you know, shout us out on Twitter, you know, share us with your friends, you know, just put the name out there. We're trying to build, uh, we're trying to build a good community of, of just good people who, who want to see the world be a better place. Um, it's like what, uh, it's like what Mac just said, um, 
in the chat is joy is an act of defiance and with joy we win even if we lose to live well is a victory all in its own for we all do die and you know the the core tenet of riot house is whenever whenever systematic cruelty becomes the law of the land to be kindness is punk as fuck and we always strive to be punk as fuck and we would like all of you to be punk as fuck with us so uh so yeah, to everybody who's already followed, to all of our riders out there, we appreciate you, we love you, um, and to everybody else, and, and not up to and including all of those people I just mentioned, and even those who don't follow us and just are kind of here, just hanging out. Just always remember, you're loved, you're important, and you matter. But we're going to go raid somebody now, because um, uh, our boy, Pyro is uh is doing some fucking last of us there we go he's not showing up on my raid list anyway uh pyro's doing some last of us so like go hang out and watch uh i think it's ellie is the main character in this one i wonder what happened to joel anyway uh yeah so uh we're gonna we're gonna go send you guys over there um thanks again for hanging out uh we love you we appreciate you and uh yeah like i said before you're important and you matter. See you later, guys. Bye. Ooh, that was.